Yo, Nez Nation, how are you doing? I hope you're doing really, really well. Look, if you're struggling at all with, you know, where to even start, how to figure out, how to end the frustration, the struggles, the pain of where do I even start with my job search? I just graduated or I'm going back into the job uh, marketplace after 20, 30 years of not being in it or 15, 10 years or even five years. You're going to want to watch this video in its entirety Um, this is a coaching call that I did with an amazing student of mine who was nice enough, kind enough to allow me to share this with you guys. And it is absolutely minute for minute jam packed with bone marrow value. You're going to get so much out of this video, so much out of this content that, um, you really need to watch the entire thing. We talk about everything about where to get started, how to get started, how to position yourself, how to deal with the anxiety, frustration. We talk about life. We talk about career. We talk about business. We talk about how to start your own business, how to become a consultant, a coach. I mean, it's just filled to the brim with so much. And so, um, I just wanted to, you know, really get on here really quickly and give you a, a bit of an introduction to that. Um, I apologize, the video quality and audio quality might not be that great, but it's just the content is so super informative and super helpful that I had to share this with you guys. Let me know in the comments. Let me know. Message me if you have to. Email me, nez at professornez.com. Let me know what you thought of this. Let me know what you thought of this piece of content. Was it helpful? Did it help you? Was it something that you'd like to see more of these sort of one-on-one coaching calls, Q and A's, things like that, please let me know and make sure again, uh, it really starts to get really, uh, um, kind of broad and, and more, I, I want to say soulful towards the 30 minute, 25 minute mark, uh, and onwards. Um, you know, we talk a lot about tactical stuff. We talk a lot about, you know, detailed specific things and also larger, more kind of broad overview perspective, uh, things, but it just, it's just, I'm really, really proud of this piece of content. And I know most of us are sitting at home right now, quarantined. So check this out. Let me know what you think. And I'd love to hear from you. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So talk to me, tell me, tell me a little bit about what you kind of, how I can help you and what you wanted to ask me. And and, and, and where, where, where you're, you're kind of struggling a little bit. Okay. Um, well, my priorities have vastly shifted in the last month as I'm sure everyone's have. Oh yeah. Um, and my original plan was I am a creative writing major and I was working on my, uh, capstone novel and my goal was to finish it. I remember that. I remember that. And just find a job not a dream job to just pay the bills until I could find an agent or a publisher or I just even get my start to get my foot in the door or just have some money rolling in while I'm making edits. Um, so that was my plan, honestly, for the last two or three years, that's been my plan and I'm very close, but, um, it got to the point and this is a little strange, but my novel is about, uh, the apocalypse. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. How Um, perfect. (laughs) Hey, this could be, this could be a number one seller. (laughs) I know. And in some ways it, the current situation has helped the writing, but then in other ways, it's just honestly too real. And with someone that has depression and anxiety to begin with, just the pressure to finish this giant project while having no guarantee of what was going to happen. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to come back to California in two months um so i yeah and so i made the decision to put pursuing the novel on hold just for now i'm not deleting it or anything just on hold um and my new priority is just to get any kind of job that's enough to sign a lease and maybe put a deposit down on a car right i don't care what it is i have two years of administrative experience with the Dean of Students office. And that's kind of my biggest thing. I was kind of looking at office jobs, you know, content writing. I mean, I applied for, you know, companies I would love to work for, but you know, I don't know if those are really feasible. Um, and honestly, I'm just kind of in the dark applying. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on handshake. I like redid my resume. I like, uh, I talked to, I think, you know, Aaron Berthon. Yes. 
yeah, yeah. I had a meeting with her and she helped me with my resume. Awesome. Awesome. I, I've been making the steps I thought I had to make, but I just, I still don't know if I'm doing the right thing. And I, it's really stressing me out. Obviously not everyone is hiring right now. <laughs> like, you know, just on Friday, half of my dad's company got laid off. Um, and so like, I'm it sorry just, to hear that. I don't I'm know. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. But actually, um, this is very, this is extremely, ex uh, sadly, in a lot of my clients, and I want to, I want to hear from more from you. I don't mean to, I apologize for interrupting. You're good. But like, this is going, this is going across <laughs> the board. I mean, unemployment, um, layoffs, cuts, restructuring. This is like unprecedented, and it's going and happening on a very, very consistent basis. Sadly, um, just, yeah. just literally, just like a week ago. A friend of mine, you know, reached out to me, uh, you know, who, who is a neighbor. Both of our kids are in baseball together, uh, you know, got laid off uh, from his job. And, and, and so mm -hmm. just to let you know, it's, it's definitely going around and it's definitely, I don't know if it's going to stop anytime soon because the economy has basically halted indefinitely. Um, there's, yeah. there's really no buying and selling and, and operations really going on unless you're essential businesses, AKA hospitals, uh, healthcare, pharmacy, food, and nutrition and grocery. Uh, mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that there's not a ton of opportunities, but anyway, keep going. I want to, I want to hear more. Oh no. Yeah. I, um, I mean, I, despite the current circumstance i mean it's hard to find a job as a senior to begin with and then throw this in the mix um and so i i just kind of took on the mentality of i'll, I'll just keep applying don't have anything else to do uh <laughs> like i'm staying with my parents in chicago right now uh but half of my stuff is in my house in chicago uh in california all packed up ready to go if i can get back in time before my lease ends in june um, and my original plan was to just get a job and move out like the first week of June and my parents bought their plane tickets and everything was set, but, um, I don't really know what's going to happen right now. So what, what I want, what I want is to find a job in LA or the LA area. And that's where I've been applying. I'm still mo planning on moving to California when I'll be able to do that is up in the air. Um, but I was hoping I could get there at least in June I don't know yeah uh, so I guess I don't know I I guess I was just wondering if you had any advice for just a graduating senior with writing experience writing doesn't pay anything I already know that <laughs> um, or at least entry-level writing jobs um, I don't know I just wondering if you had any advice or what I should be looking for like keywords to search I don't know anything um, well, there's no, yeah, there's a there. lot. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. And the first thing that I would say is you, you want to kind of set your expectations um, in the right kind of frame of mind. You know, one thing I talk yeah. about a lot is getting your mindset right before you get your message right. <laughs> because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how good your message is. It doesn't matter how good your skills are. It doesn't matter how much experience or education. If you don't get who you are and communicate that properly, it means goose egg. One thing right. about you, Bria, I just want to say right off the bat, like you have an amazing soul. Um, you care okay. about people. You care about how you communicate yourself. And you care about, like I, I mentioned this from day one, I remember the very first class and looking at you and saying, I know you're feeling me. And I say, there's something about you. We have a lot to talk about that I'm really looking forward to even maybe connecting more in the future. I really do. I love connecting with smart people and if I can help wow that means the world to me um, as far as like setting your expectations right just to get a little bit more kind of detailed and specific <clears throat> to what that means Bria is don't don't worry if the position title job company is not ideal right now um, yeah the big thing is is just to get in somewhere that you can support yourself yeah and you can support your livelihood for the time being and be in the location that you want to be in. I'm assuming you want to be in Southern California, Los yeah. Angeles, Orange County, whatever. And so don't, don't limit yourself. In other words, don't limit yourself to just writing jobs. You might right. be doing something more administrative, internship oriented, maybe even dare I say communications, sales, marketing. The cool thing about writers 
is that writers, you know, have so many other transferable skills. Like people mm -hmm. who, people, I've said this before, people who have communication skills, which writers are great communicators, especially in the written context. People, excuse me, people who have great communication skills, like that to me is so much more valuable than just having one or two uh, technical skills or hard skills, which don't get me wrong, those are valuable, but without communication skills, without the ability to communicate who you are, how you can bring value, and just literally when it comes to collaboration, when it comes to company culture, when it comes to teamwork, innovation, these kinds of things, your communication, your writing skills are, are so transferable. And so, and so my point is, is that, you know, in order for you and you're young right now and you're extremely, you know, new into the professional marketplace, I'm assuming mm -hmm. you don't have over 10 years of working experience, right? <laughs> and so, and so what, this is why it's important. And I tell college graduates this all the time, set your expectations, you know, get them in the right framework right from the get go. And that is this. Don't right. expect to have, because I had this expectation when I graduated, and I know a lot of people in my field did. You know, I expected I'm going to get this really cool writer's gig and sit by the ocean in this writer's room next to all these writers and write brilliant words for brilliant creators and brilliant this. And it's just, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not something that can't be achievable, but you got to pay your dues, in other words. And yeah. I didn't really quite understand that. And so my first gigs when I was 19, 18, and I say gigs, I've been working since I was a paper boy when I was eight years old. But I'd say my first gigs gigs were like, I did telemarketing, which is like, ugh, right? <laughs> uh, but I was making at that time, this is way before you were born. When I was a telemarketer, I was making $12 an hour. Oh, wow. Which back then, like the minimum back wage then. back then, this is like 20, 30 years ago, actually yeah. 30 years ago. Back wow. then, the minimum wage, now minimum wage is, I think, 11 or 12 or 15 in some places. Back mm -hmm. then, minimum wage was 375 Wow. And so I was making $12 an hour, and I didn't – here's another thing, too, because I know that you have integrity. I know that you have artistic – um, you know, integrity as well. And, and, and you value doing something that gives you purpose, that gives you fulfillment, and you're going to get there. But my, the reason I'm focusing so much on expectations right now, Bria, is because I thought of myself as a failure, as a failed artist, as a failed writer, because I was doing jobs that didn't align with who I thought I was, just to make money and just to get by. But the mm -hmm. problem, here's the problem. The problem is, is I was subjectively uh, attaching meaning to my means of being able to take care of myself, which your job is not who you are, right? What you yeah. do to create the livelihood for you to be creative and do your thing is not something that should define you. So don't identify. This is so huge right here, Bria. Don't identify the job with who you are and the job with your your yardstick of success and failure. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. If you set the if you set the expectation that you know what, I might be a receptionist, I might be a hostess, I might be a server, I might be an office clerk, I might be an administrative assistant or something like that. Mm -hmm. As long as you're paying the bills, as long as you're able to support yourself mm -hmm. and support your artistic <laughs> endeavors, that's mm -hmm. fine. That's fun. I'm not saying that there isn't writer jobs out there. Um, there's all sorts of technical writing gigs that, that can pay not too terribly. Uh, you could do copywriting. You could do content uh, uh, writing for, for creators. I actually think freelance work is really huge right now, mm -hmm. um, especially for writers. Um, there's all sorts of websites, and I'll send you a list of websites, um, oh, and I'll actually leave them in the description of this video. Um, there's all sorts of freelance sites where you can literally make money for writing for people who need, you know, website copy, social media copy. Um, they need letters. They need ghostwriters for their books, ghostwriters for their articles. Yeah. And blogs. There's so much work that you can do as an independent contractor from home 
doing something that you love. Doing something that you yeah. love. Now, the work itself that you're going to be doing for these people is probably not something that you're going to love, but it's actually a great way to, A, support yourself, which is number one, put food on the table, make sure that you have a place to live, right? And you don't have to depend on anybody, including your parents. So independence yeah. and autonomy, independence and autonomy is huge. The second thing is, is that you're actually honing your craft and diversifying your writing acumen. In other words, you're mostly a creative writer. And, and a lot of copyright, actually all writing requires creativity. And as a matter of fact, you could even argue every, everybody, anybody who's good at something, whether it's being a good mother, being a good CEO, being a good project manager, teacher, firefighter requires creativity. But, mm -hmm. but by you doing contract work, and I'm going to send you a huge list that's going to change your life of all these websites that you can set up shop today. Um, and a couple of them come to mind, like Fiverr. I know you've heard of Fiverr. Yeah. Uh, Upwork. Upwork is great for writers. Um, there's, uh, there's a couple of other ones that are really good. Freelance.com, I think. Um, and, and I'll send you also, I'll send you also, Bria. I have a ton of videos on job search sites, websites that you, the top 10 websites you need to go to apply for jobs. Okay. Also, and that's also on my YouTube channel too. It's the top 10 job search sites of 2020. Um, and I'll also, and I'll leave that in the description as well. And I'll also, um, I have a ton of videos on like, you know, video interviewing, interview tips, interview best practices, um, career, you know, master classes, a bunch of stuff that you need to watch. Like you have okay. to watch. But sure. like, just, to, just to kind of like, to me, to me, it really starts with mindset expectations. Do not, because I don't, I know you, you care about your artistic um, integrity being intact. You care about you being someone who is not selling yourself out and, and killing your soul. I know you care about that. Because yeah. you, you remind me of me when I was 20, 21, 19. Um, I really felt dead inside when I was a telemarketer. I mean, telemarketer is one of the worst jobs on the planet. This is before the iPhone. This is before robocalls. This is when we actually had rotary phones and we actually talked on the phone. <laughs> there was no texting. There was no social media. Uh, and, so, and so, you know, but, but here's another thing too. Like, not only do I not want you to identify your job with who you are, always keep your eye on the prize. The ultimate kind of goal, the ultimate sort of core of who you are is you being able to be a creative individual who can contribute to the world. That's your, like, that's your value prop right there. Like, you feel best when people get value out of your work. You feel the most human. You feel the most... Bria, when people, when people like are like, dude, your work was, was badass. Like, I love that story. I love that. Yeah. You know, I love that short story, poem, or whatever. Um, I remember getting published in a few, you know, online journals. And it was like, to me, it was like uh, Harper's Bazaar. It was like the Atlantic Monthly published me, like the New Yorker. Like, I felt like a published author. And my friends would read it. My parents would read it. My parents didn't understand it. They're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Which, by the way, that's another thing, too. If your parents don't like your work, that's actually a good thing. <laughs> your parents is not your ideal audience. Your ideal yeah. audience are people who, you know, can relate to what you're going through, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, your struggles, your pain, your challenges, your, your hopes, your desires, your fears, everything. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, I remember one of my favorite writers once said, if your parents like your stuff, you failed. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a stupid thing to say, but it makes sense in a lot of ways too. It does. And yeah, so it... what I'm trying to say really on a, on a kind of big, large perspective is think of, think of jobs and think of work as one tiny facet of molding your experience as who is Bria Holt and what Bria Holt can bring to the table. Because whether you know this or not, Bria, when I was working as a paper boy, when I was working as a telemarketer, when I was working retail, when I was working at the drive through at Carl's Jr. as a 13-year-old, 14-year-old, all of that stuff will be 
very, very valuable to your writing. Why? Because it's the human experience. I came across characters working right. with Miles Jr. that I never thought I ever would in my life. I came across characters being a paper boy that I never thought I ever would in my life. And they still somehow bleed their way into my work every day. Yeah. It's everywhere. As an artist, as a writer, your inspiration can come from a cat walking down an alley to, you know, Tchaikovsky or Mozart. The, the point is inspiration, the, the stuff that is, is made of your best work can be found everywhere. It yeah. Can be found everywhere. You just have to pay attention. And so, yeah. and so you have so many skills, you have so much to bring to the table. I wouldn't just apply to writer's jobs just to get back to the kind of task at hand here. I wouldn't just apply to writer's jobs. I would apply to any job that will allow you to, to continue to create at your own pace, at your own level of satisfaction, and in the location that you desire. Whether that's an office administrator, a server, a telemarketer, a host. I'm just saying these are all unsexy jobs, but they allow you to keep doing what you want to do. And so right. my point is, is that there's two avenues for you that I think are going to be really important. Number one is what I just said, applying to jobs that will just enliven you and keep you afloat. And mm -hmm. which may lead to all, you see, this is the beautiful thing about life. You never know where these gigs could lead. Like yeah. you, might be, you might be a receptionist at a firm and then you might meet somebody there. Like this is how life works. You might meet somebody there who's like, hey, what's your name? And you strike up a conversation. You find out they're the vice president of the company and they start to learn a little bit more about you. And you say, yeah, I'm a writer. And then the vice president of the company, let's just say his name is Joe. Joe goes, you know, I have a daughter who actually works at a publishing house. Um, what if you send me your manuscript? Maybe I could pass. I like your personality. I like who you are. Hey, Bria, send me your manuscript and maybe I'll pass it along to my daughter. You never know. Yeah. The point That's is, it. is life is not linear. You know, school likes to paint things. Education likes to paint things as, here, you take these classes, you get your good grades, you get your degree, you get married, you get your job, everything's linear. Life doesn't work that way. Life's like this. <laughs> you know, life, like, I, I, mean, I mean, to be honest with you, Bria, I mean, completely, completely in earnest, if you would have told me 10 years ago that I was going to be running my own branding agency and still teaching part-time at Chapman University, I would have said, you're full of crap. Like, never. I would never be running my own branding agency. But here I am, and I'm happier than I've ever been because I'm still able to bring my energy. I'm still able to bring my skills and contribute. And I'm changing people's, I'm like, I'm literally, and I'm not bragging here. I'm not saying, look at me, but I'm literally transforming lives. Like I've got people who went from doing a job that they hate, dreading Mondays to not only making more money, which helps their family, helps their livelihood, but actually waking up and not feeling like, ugh, another Monday which helps yeah. their soul. That's more like soul nourishing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like, my point is, is like, don't, don't think of everything as A squared equals B squared equals C squared. Life doesn't work that way. Life is X, Y, Z equals G, carry the I, cross out the R, you know, add two to the, it's just, it's, in, it's like a goodwill hunting mathematical equation. It doesn't make sense to anybody. <laughs> yeah. so if you just be open-minded and, pay attention as a good artist, as a good writer, and allow sometimes, this is going to be really unpopular opinion, but don't always feel like you have to do, 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 and don't always feel like you have to become, 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 but just literally allow things to happen and let go. Let go of so much control and just, yeah. see where, I mean, life is much more intelligent Life is much more intelligent than anybody lets on to be. People think you have to go get them and you have to, you know, you have to be your own commander of your own ship and you have to, you know, make your own luck and everything is in my control and I am the Lord of the universe. Well, let me tell you something. Life doesn't work that way. Um, there's a lot of things that are out of your control. And most of the time, if I look at my success, Bria, and I look back, if I just would have let the F go and not worried so much and allowed life to take its course, I would have saved myself a lot of stress. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, let go, let God. Um, one of my favorite phrases, let go, let God. And you don't have to believe in God. 
it can be anything like the universe, whatever, but it's like this beautiful thing called life, this, this beautiful thing called the universe brought you here intact. It's not a cruel thing. The universe is not a cruel mother. It's going to take care of all of us. So anyway, I don't want to get too out into the, the weeds, but just on a tactical level, you know, Brie, but I think you can appreciate all this, right? Like on a tactical level, be open-minded. Don't think of your job as identifying as who you are. It's just a way for you to cultivate and nourish your artistic goals and dreams and apply to places that you feel, you know, this is something that I could probably do because I have communication skills. I know how to talk to people. I know how to treat people. I can actually, you know, help and I can offer some value. And that's one thing. The second thing is doing the freelance stuff which actually the freelance stuff might be even more of a, of a path for you. Uh, and as a matter of fact, you could do both. You could still work as the receptionist or the office assistant and still do freelance work. And who knows, you might build your freelance work and be like, holy mackerel, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. You never know. You could be a, a consultant like Nez. You know what I mean? Uh, and I'll send you again, I'll put, I'll put the links in the description and I'll send you a bunch of, I'll send you a bunch of websites for that as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are the two paths forward and, and just, and this, and then, and then what I was saying before is just, just don't, don't, don't stress out. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. life is, life is going to take care of all of us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's kind of like the metaphor that I like to use is you're on this aircraft carrier and it's taking you where you need to go without any help from you, but everybody's rowing like crazy, Right. You don't, have to, you don't have to row on an aircraft carrier. <laughs> and so my point is life is the aircraft carrier, Bria. It's going to take you everywhere in my life. My kids, my wife, my family, my profession. Life has always put me where I needed to be. Life has always put me where I needed to be. Sometimes you just have to get the F out of the way and let things happen. Let go. Let it happen. Does that make sense? It absolutely does. And it's very valuable because I'm a very like, oh, I need to control everything. <laughs> and that could be, you know what, and we all have our own sort of, um, we all have our own sort of personal, you know, um, transformational, evolutionary challenges and unique idiosyncrasies uh, that we have to, that we have to kind of face and that we have to kind of I don't want to say uh, the only word I can think of is battle. It's not really a battle, but the, just that we have to kind of transcend, if you will. And so that could be yours is the, the practice of not wanting to hold the reins so tightly could be your biggest task for the next 20 years, 10 years. Yeah. And I truly believe that if you feel a pull, a tug, not in here, but in your chest, because this thing usually causes a lot of trouble. <laughs> But if you feel, if you feel, trust your intuition. I'm telling you right now, Bria, your intuition is a billion times smarter than anybody. Your intuition is a billion times smarter than Professor Nez. And whoever tries to tell you, you need to do this, you need to do that. If your intuition does a little bit of this, like, uh, I don't think so. Listen to that. Listen to that. That is your ultimate professor. The ultimate professor lives inside your chest. And so if you're feeling a tug to do something or find something or travel or quest or journey or anything, listen to that. That's your ultimate guide. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. I mean, you don't have kids. You don't have a family to take care of. You don't have, I mean, you should be really happy. You should be really happy. Why? Because you can fail and fail and fail and not worry about, holy mackerel, I got to feed kids. I got a mortgage to pay. Like you should be experimenting right now. You should be trying and tasting everything. Taste from the cup of life. Drink from the cup of life. Every droplet, every, every chalice that comes in your direction, take a sip from that. It could just be something that, you know, leads you to your next big thing. Or at the very least, it's going to add more, um, it's going to add more uh, a nuance to your artistry. In other words, the more experience you have, the more your art is going to be more powerful and reach more people. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I hope that helps. I mean, I hope that's helpful in some way. No, it definitely does. Um, I had the beginnings of thinking that way, but I think I needed 
it to be put uh, very eloquently, like you just put it. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if it was eloquent. I feel like I was. I feel like I was kind of rambling a lot, and I apologize. But but yeah, I uh, I do believe I do believe in. I'm a big believer in you know seeing how things trust here's here's another thing too like it's it's really like trusting and it took a lot for me to get there um trusting that things are going to unfold the way that they should um because most of us feel regret all the time why didn't i do this why didn't i do that i should have done this i should have done that you have to trust the process you have to trust that whatever led you here is going to take you home you know right and yeah and, you know, and, and, and I'm not trying to get mystical or weird. I mean, literally, just practically, you know, everything is, everything is happening the way it should be happening. Even this pandemic, I mean, this is a very unpopular opinion, but even this pandemic, there's a lot of beauty and tragedy, a lot of tragedy and beauty. It's very um, interrelated. You can't have one without the other, really. Uh, and, so, and so if you trust, if you deeply, deeply, and nobody can manufacture this. Nobody can make you believe this. You have to experience it. When you trust that things will unfold the way they should, your fear, your anxiety, your frustration, your confusion subsides immensely. And you trust life more. And so, um, you know, I, I, again, I don't want to get too, like, you know, too out there, but, but, and I, but I believe it. And I, it's important. But just on a very, let's just review on a very tactical level. Freelance work is huge for you because there's so much opportunity now and nobody wants to go outside. Nobody wants to, there is a little bit of a hiring freeze and restructuring and cutoffs and layoffs are abundant. So freelance is a big thing. And then don't identify your job with who you are and don't feel that if I'm working as something, not a writer with the title writer in it, I'm a failure because that is incorrect. That is incorrect. Your job is just one molecule of who you are. Your job isn't even a molecule. It's just something that you do to enable you to be who you are. You know what I mean? And also yeah, it's a great, it's, it's the ingredients to your art too. Your work is your ingredients to your art. So what does that mean? You have to have ingredients to cook something. If you don't have ingredients, you don't have anything, right? So if you want to think of your work as a cake, you got to have the right ingredients. These things that you're going through are the ingredients. What do you think? What are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, do you have any that, questions or anything? Or do you have any? No, I, it, that's all like very, very helpful. Yeah. And I, I was honestly thinking the same thing this week is that the pandemic is almost, I think it's probably weirdly what I needed in some ways. In some what we all need it. It's what we all needed. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm spending me more time with my family. I'm getting to know my kids a lot better. Uh, you know, I'm valuing uh, my time. You know, I, I, you know what? Here's, the, here's another thing, too. And, and I want to hear from you. I'm sorry. Like, we're never going to ever take for granted an aisle filled with toilet paper ever again. <laughs> you know how much we take for granted every single day, Bria? Mm -hmm. and I talk about this all the time. We take for granted the air we breathe. We take for granted that we can literally get a passport and travel wherever we want and come back home like nothing happened. We take for granted that if I'm hungry and I feel like chicken, I can get chicken. If I'm hungry and I, want to, I feel like fish, I just have to drive 10 minutes and get fish. We take for granted these things. This, yeah. is all, this entire <laughs> crisis is absolutely necessary for the next phase of the evolution of mankind. I'm not saying death is good. I'm not saying, you know, uh, uh, death is needed or death. Well, actually it is needed, but I'm not saying that this is a, I'm not saying it's a good thing that families are suffering. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is that, well, I will quote Whitman. Whitman once said, I know it lucky to be born, but I know it even luckier to die. It is even luckier to die. If you really think about that, I know it is lucky to be born but I, I know it is 10 times, you're 10 times more lucky to die, which is an interesting statement if you think about what the sort of beautiful ramifications of that statement is and how the trust that, that the unknown is not equivalent to danger and the unknown is not something we should fear because death is the ultimate unknown, right? 
<laughs> I mean, that stuff is powerful. You know, I mean, talk about trusting the process. <laughs> you know, death and life, they go hand in hand. You know what I mean? So you have, you can't have one without yeah, the other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. No, that, yeah, that helps a lot. Thank you. And, you know, uh, I want you to know, uh, 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 Bria, that, that, that in my entire life, you know, it's, it's something that I never, ever could have predicted. It's nothing, it's something that I never, I mean, I was that dude, Bria. I was that dude who said to himself, I'm never getting married and I'm never having kids. I was that dude. Uh, and then I met the woman who changed my life. I met the woman of my dreams and I was totally floored. I mean, it was Romeo and Juliet when I met my wife. I was with my friends at a restaurant. She was the restaurant manager. And when I first met her, I told all my friends, that's who I'm gonna marry. And everybody laughed. Everybody thought I was nuts. Everybody thought I was drunk. And she didn't say yes to a date for a year and a half, two years. And then she finally did, and the rest is history. And so I, I was that dude. Uh, and my point is this, you, 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 just because we can't predict the future, just because we, and, and school and education likes to say, yes, we're predicting the future. Because if you get a degree, if you do all the right things, your life is gonna be spick and span, not true. Um, I have three degrees, and there were times where I wanted to literally jump off a bridge. There were times where I wanted to end my life and end it all. And so degrees don't guarantee you, nothing guarantees you anything. But I guarantee you this, that if we did know the future, if we did know what was gonna to happen to us, we would be miserable. Because the excitement of life, the beauty of life is that I have no idea what tomorrow's gonna to happen, what tomorrow's gonna to bring. That's the excitement of life. And instead of it causing anxiety, Instead of it causing uncertainty, shift your mindset. Who, maybe I don't need to know what's going to happen. Maybe I don't need to drive myself crazy. This is the real work right here, Bria. Maybe I don't need to like pull my hair out and stress out my family and stress out my friends and stress, more importantly, myself out by always wanting to know what's next, what's next, what's next, what do I do, what do I do? Let go. Let it happen. It's all working in your favor. Trust the process and everything else will be beautiful, I, I promise you. Being on this earth for 44 years, that is the number one capital T truth that I can impart on anybody. If I knew it was gonna happen five years from now, because I know you get that question, right, Bria? Hey, Bria, where do you see yourself in five years? It's like, <laughs> shut up, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's such a terrible question. I didn't see myself here five years ago. And if I did, what's the point? Okay, I know where I'm going to be in five years, so I just do it and then get there. Yay, I'm here. It's so boring. I don't want to know. You shouldn't want to know. Let it happen. As an artist, you want to trust that you're going to be given all the ingredients to your art. And as an artist, you want to be bamboozled. You want to be knocked off your ass. You want to be shook. You want to be thrown off guard. Those are the things that, that, that really are the most exciting and interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And Where are you right now? Are you in school right now? No, no, I'm in Chicago. Oh, you're in Chicago. Okay, yeah, that's right. I, for, I forgot. I'm sorry. Very good. Um, yeah, no, and I, I um, sorry if this gets too specific, but I, um, my project, I think you could tell that I really like fashion. Oh, my God. I loved your project, by the way. Oh, Love. thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but you I did such a, you did such a great job. Oh, thank you. Um, no, I just well that honestly writing that it made me realize how truly passionate I really was about that, and that that's a totally different career path that I would even love to experiment with more in the future. And even having a second alternative to writing was just like wow, I was really putting myself in this like really narrow category when I didn't really need to. I wanted to you know, it, it feels good to expand more creatively, if that makes sense. Yes. Yes. yes yeah, absolutely. No, I, I love that. Yeah. And, and that's absolutely true. Um, I, um, I actually think that, you know, let me ask you a question because about that, do you, do you think that that would be actually something that would interest you to pursue? 
Absolutely, 100%. Honestly, even more than writing right now. Honestly, I, I think you should maybe, I mean, and I don't want really to put on. It's scary to say that. <laughs> yeah, you know, honestly, I was going to talk to you about your project, but I actually think that that's a, that's a really, really good idea, Bria. And it's going to be, it's going to be something that will take a lot of work and a lot of patience. I'm not going to lie. Running a business is very, very hard. Yeah. Um, you, don't, you don't have a secure paycheck every month. Like no. working at a W2 job or a regular job, but <clears throat> the internal rewards, the, the reward of creating something from scratch, which you're a creator just like me and you love creating and don't get it twisted. Business is creativity to the tilt. Um, that will that will all the blood sweat and toil has paid massive dividends not only am i and i'm not bragging here but not only am i you know making way more money than i would anywhere else especially at the university because they pay, pay professors jack but um i'm also able to set my own hours i'm also able to run my own ship and not have to answer to anybody there are beautiful benefits but it takes a shit ton of work i'm not gonna lie yeah. Um, and it takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of perseverance. And there's going to be days where you go, I want to quit. I want to quit. I'm going to go work, you know, at a corporation and just end this because it's too much responsibility, but it's worth it. It's worth it if you can fight through all of the phantom mental barriers that are going to come your way. It's worth it. Way worth it. I think I, I believe in what your idea was. I believe in the the fact that your idea could come to fruition. I really do. No, that, that really, that feels good. Yeah, absolutely. I, do you, do you know what the app Depop is? No, Have you I ever don't. Heard? So it's a thrifting app and it's where people sell their old clothes, but it's really, it's awesome. You should check it out, honestly. Oh, wow. That sounds cool. I have a lot of shit I want to sell. People my age make like ten thousand dollars a month doing this sometimes what? selling like because they go in thrift shops and they find things that are very valuable and they up the price and oh, not it's every like it's them. like flipping it's like arbitrage it's yeah, like, uh, it's, like uh, it's like yeah you're you're buying stuff <laughs> people do that on uh people do that at target and kmart they'll go to they'll go to target or walmart and then go sell it on ebay for like you know, a, a increase in, in price for profit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I run my own shop on that app. Do you really? Wait, what's that? Yeah. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What's the name of the app? Depop. D-E-P-O-P. Depop. Okay. Yeah. There are the other. Creative, the apps. creative community. Wait, hold on a second. Let me screen share real fast. Is this the right, is this the right website right here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Depop. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is an app that's only for mobile, right? Uh, yeah, it's mostly used only for mobile, yeah. Interesting. Um, and there are other thrifting apps, but in my opinion, this one's the best because people put the most work and thought into it. Like, they're not just taking a really crappy picture of a shirt. They're, like, styling it with a whole outfit, and they're selling an image and almost an, an aesthetic to people. Wow. And there's so much creativity involved and you can make money. I've made money selling things on this app. That's rad. That's and rad. And like, I have no idea how to do that. Like I have no like prior experience in business. I mean, I've worked retail, but I've never done it myself, but I was able to do that. So like, you know, anyway. what? you know what? And nothing teaches better than actually going through and falling, tumbling, stumbling your way through it. Let me tell you something too. This is something I want to, I want to really shout as loud as I can, metaphorically, which is this. <sighs> um, failure is essential for success. Remember how I said the, the kind of duality of things like, you know, tragedy, beauty, beauty, tragedy. Mm -hmm. Failure is essential to success. There is not, you will not find one person, whether it's Jeff Bezos uh, or whether it's a small mom and pop store down the street, there has not been anybody in the history of the world who's ever been super successful who has not failed a bunch of times, if not thousands of times. And so failure is something that I want you to get into your brain, Abria, is not a bad thing. Failure is just, it just means you need to shift directions. That's all it means. So if you, 
like, you know, the biggest thing, you know, I do branding consulting, right? And, and the biggest reason that people don't get results is because they think that like they should have gotten results uh, a long time ago and they didn't and they quit. They quit like inches before success. Um, quitters, quitters really are the reason why, you know, people think failure is a weakness. Um, failure is absolutely essential to success. It is the perfect formula for success is you've got to have equal parts of failure, equal parts, this and that and creativity and gumption and dedication, sweat. Failure is an, is an integral part of the recipe for success. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people your age and especially when I was your age, if I failed, it was like, well, I suck. I'm going to go do something else. Not true. Not true. It just means you need to have that stick to itiveness and just maybe shift your mindset, look at things in a different way and shift, just, you know, just shift. It's a maneuver. It's just a maneuver. Um, and, and watch what happens, watch what happens. And so if you're this Depop thing looks really cool. I just sent the link to my wife, uh, because I know my wife has a ton of stuff that she could sell. Um, uh, thank, thank you for that. A and B, if this Depop thing is cool and you can make some money, who knows, maybe, and you're passionate about it, freaking do it. Yeah. And then keep me posted. I'll probably, I'll probably have you come on my podcast and talk about your Depop success because that relates to my, my audience. Sure. Yeah. I, if I can do it, literally anyone can do it. Cause I had to teach myself everything by myself. I didn't have anyone helping me and I've and managed to. So that's awesome. Know. And it's Depop, D is in dog, E pop, P is in Paul, O, P is in Paul. So Depop, yeah. D E P O P. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll check that out. Well, hey, Bria, um, I thought this was freaking fantastic, and I really, really appreciate you allowing me to share this with my audience. Um, I think that you, I mean, you're not going to believe me when I say this, Bria, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, I think that you, if you just really follow through with the things that we've talked about, and you pay very, very close attention to at your world and your surroundings and opportunities and what have you. And, and the biggest thing is distraction is the enemy of creativity. It's not lack of skill or, or anything else. It's really distraction. And when I say distraction, it can be boys, it can be parties, it can be, you know, social media, it can be, you know, scrolling Instagram, it can be video games, all the things, drugs, alcohol, it can be a lot of things, all those things that, um, can really get in the way of what you want to do and what you want to be. If you can minimize that, I'm not saying don't have fun. You should have fun. You're a young person, young, beautiful, intelligent. You should definitely have fun, but don't let the distractions outweigh your um, work at what you want to do. And, and then, and, and when I say you don't believe, you're not going to believe me. What I'm saying is, is that if you do that, everything is going to be absolutely capital F fine. I promise you. So just take that with you, okay? Okay, I absolutely will. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you so much. I oh, really you're absolutely welcome. And don't forget too, Bria, like if you like this, you know, and we can meet again for sure. Um, you know, I do, I do a lot of this kind of stuff on my YouTube channel. You should go check out those videos. You really, really should. I'm not kidding you. Well, I was planning on it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. And, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to send you, uh, I'm going to send you, um, some of the stuff that I send to my clients, I'm going to remember those videos I told you I'm going to send you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to send you that. And then I'm also going to send you a bunch of other stuff too. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I'm going to send you those, those links uh, that I was telling you about for freelance that you should go research. That's uh, something I never considered before. Yeah. So, the Depop right. thing that, I mean, the Depop thing is kind of essentially, you know, the same thing. It seems like yeah. it's almost like your own business. I mean, that's what, that's what freelancing is, is essentially doing your own business. Uh, and so, um, I'm going to send you that as well. And, um, I'm just going to title it helpful links in the subject. Is there any other, is there any other, uh, anything else that you want to talk about or anything else really quickly? Um, any, any questions? Well, if you, if you don't mind talking about it, I, I was wondering if you, cause I know on our first day of class, you mentioned uh, that you had struggled with depression as well. 
And I know during this time, I think everybody with mental health issues, it's kind of ramped up. And I was just wondering if you have any advice for trying to find a job while being really depressed. Oh, wow. (laughs) Well, I mean, (sighs) you know, one of the things that I would say is, um, to, you know, it's, it's, it can be, it can be naturally depressing and naturally anxiety inducing, even when you don't have any mental health problems. Um, yeah. But, you know, one of the ways to handle your mental health during this, this thing, and I have a, I have a video that I'm going to send to you that I literally just did called, you know, how to deal with anxiety during this coronavirus crisis. Oh, yeah. And so I'm going to send you that, uh, Bria. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I want you to watch that video and then, and then what I'd like to do is maybe in a couple of weeks or more, let's meet again and I'll talk more. I want you to check out it because I don't want to overwhelm you. Um, We've talked talked about a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, You know, we've already been meeting for over an hour practically. So what I want to do is, I know time flies when you're having fun. (laughs) But what I want to do is, I I don't want to overwhelm you because I have some things I want to talk to you about, but what I want you to do is go through all the things and tactics and strategies we talked about, Mm -hmm. go through all the links I'm about to send you, and then maybe in a couple of weeks or more, or maybe next month, let's meet again and we'll talk about exactly that topic, okay? Okay, sounds good. And I will take your advice in the meantime and I will apply to everything. Please do. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm also going to send you a link to that uh, video on what are the top 10 job search sites that you should check out. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so Rhea, much. I think that you absolutely rock. And don't oh. ever forget this. You are amazing. You're awesome. And I'm not just saying that because you're a student. I could care less. I think you're amazing. And I think you're awesome. And do not get discouraged. The next time you feel down, the next time you're feeling a pang of anxiety, you remember this face. And you just know this, that you are somebody who we need. We need your creativity. We need your imagination. We need your energy. We need your intuitiveness. You are marvelous. Don't ever forget that. Promise me, say, Nez, I promise I'll never forget that. (laughs) Nez, I will never forget that. Awesome. Awesome.